All right, guys. So in the last video, we focused mainly on the big AI safety news that broke last week, including that new self-replication benchmark called ReplyBench, which was honestly pretty concerning. But today, we're talking about something even crazier, a brand new AI startup that's setting out to fully automate the economy. Yes, you heard that right. Their literal mission is to enable the full automation of the economy. And believe it or not, that's arguably not even the wildest thing that's happened recently in AI. Let's get into it. So here's the official announcement post from this new AI startup, which goes by the name Mechanize or Mechanize Work. They've also launched an official website, which is literally just a one-page version of the same announcement. It kind of gives off SSI vibes. If you know Ilya Sutskever's company, Safe Super Intelligence, or SSI, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Their website is also just a simple one-pager. And funnily enough, their mission, just like Mechanize's, is insanely bold and ambitious as well. Anyway, back to Mechanize, we're not going to read the whole thing word for word, but let's break down the biggest points because this is honestly pretty insane. They state, Today we're announcing Mechanize, a startup focused on developing virtual work environments, benchmarks, and training data that will enable the full automation of the economy. We will achieve this by creating simulated environments and evaluations that capture the full scope of what people do at their jobs. This includes using a computer, completing long horizon tasks that lack clear criteria for success, coordinating with others, and reprioritizing in the face of obstacles and interruptions. So basically, from what I understand, they want to create simulated work environments, essentially a digital copy of someone's work setting to then use for training AI. Now, this might not be the perfect comparison, but for some reason, it made me think about the whole artists versus AI companies debate. The AI companies are using artists' work to train their models, models that are now capable of creating similar or sometimes practically identical art. Naturally, the artists view this as copying. Some want it stopped outright, and others believe they at least deserve compensation. Now, I'm not here to get into who's right and who's wrong. That's a conversation for another time. But the reason I think this is similar to virtual work environments is because, think about it, an AI model outputs tokens based on its training data. So if you train it on a particular art style and you have tons of high quality examples to feed it, the model will get really good at generating that style. Now imagine instead of art style, we're talking about jobs. Art is to the broader economy what a specific style of art is to a specific profession, like a cashier, a plumber, or an electrician. If you feed an AI enough high quality data about a specific job, and you build a simulation that fully replicates that job, then honestly, we don't know exactly what would happen, but Mechanize seems to believe that it will work. And again, remember, their goal is to enable the full automation of the economy. Now, they do mention that current AI systems have serious shortcomings. They're unreliable, lack robust long context capabilities, struggle with agency and multimodality, and can't execute long-term plans without going off the rails. To overcome these limitations, Mechanize will produce the data and evals necessary for comprehensively automating work. Our digital environments will act as practical simulations of real-world work scenarios, enabling agents to learn useful abilities through RL, reinforcement learning. So again, think about it. If they can create these virtual work environments and then gather a bunch of high quality data on the full scope of specific jobs, they can basically turn the job into a game where the AI gets rewarded for doing something productive in its role and punished when it slacks off, basically incentivizing the AI to do its job, just like your boss does to you, except the AI won't ask for a raise, won't need sleep, won't sneak off for a smoke break, and it sure as hell won't file a harassment complaint against middle management. Now, finally, let's talk numbers. They claim that the market potential is absurdly large. Workers in the US are paid around $18 trillion per year in aggregate, and for the entire world, the number is over three times greater, around $60 trillion per year. The explosive economic growth likely to result from completely automating labor could generate vast abundance, much higher standards of living, and new goods and services that we can't even imagine today. Our vision is to realize this potential as soon as possible. 
So again, a very ambitious and optimistic mission. I do like seeing this personally, as you can probably tell from my channel name, but you can imagine it sparked a lot of mixed reactions online. As you can see here, one user wrote, unsure if this will be net positive, but also how does one invest? Interesting follow-up question. Another person said, thanks for announcing so publicly that you are traitors to humanity. Someone else wrote, just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should. But there was also this comment, which I thought was pretty thoughtful. The people commenting sad in this section are naive to think that this isn't the future where we are headed towards. It's reality. Though I am curious, will Mechanize ensure its AI systems actually understand the nuance of human decision making, collaboration, and ethics instead of just mimicking surface level behaviors in simulations? So I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, personally, I kind of agree with this last comment. I think this is the future we're headed toward, and honestly, it feels pretty much inevitable given the way our current system works. But I can also see why a lot of people think this could actually be catastrophic. Because even if a system like this works, even if you can fully automate the economy, it raises some pretty huge questions. Like, what happens when there's no meaningful work left for humans? Or what happens when people no longer earn money through labor? I mean, there's a lot of serious challenges ahead and a lot of unanswered questions. So yeah, I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this. I know it can be a bit of a touchy subject, but feel free to weigh in in the comment section. Also, by the way, here are the founders of Mechanize. You might recognize some of these names. We've got Matthew Barnett, famed AI researcher Tamai Basiroglu, and Ege Erdil. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. And some of the funders of this startup, Nat Friedman, Daniel Gross, Dorkesh Patel, and a few others. They're also actively looking to hire more engineers, if any of you are interested in helping automate humanity out of existence. Alright, now moving on, but still speaking about new AI startups, two undergrads, one of whom apparently still serving in the military, have created a new AI text-to-speech model that's supposedly better than anything we've seen before. It's outperforming Eleven Labs and even Sesame with just 1.6 billion parameters. It's also fully open source, open weights, can run on a single GPU, and again, was built by just two Korean undergrads. Let's take a listen. Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? What do we do, people? The smoke could be coming through an air duct! Oh my god! Okay! It's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure? Everybody stay fucking calm! Everybody fucking calm down! No! No! If you touch the handle, if it's hot, there might be a fire down the hallway! Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? What do we do, people? Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? What do we do, people? Good, no, not just... So, yeah. I mean, this is just one example, but the difference is incredible. Like, it's honestly insane what these two students managed to pull off. And it kind of ties back to the bigger story here. AI is likely going to eventually automate the majority of the economy. And to do that, it needs to become much more capable and productive in the real world. This is an example of the rapid progress being made toward that end. Without AI, these two kids would have never been able to create something so incredibly powerful and useful. AI will not just replace jobs, it will also supercharge what a single person, or even two students, can build. It's lowering the barrier to innovation in ways we've never seen before. And basically, if this is what two undergrads can do today, then imagine what's coming next. Alright, now this was a story that you might have missed. About a week ago, Pliny the Prompter, or Pliny the Liberator, whatever he goes by nowadays, actually leaked the full cursor system prompt. As he states, they said it couldn't be done, so here's the cursor system prompt. Now, if you don't know, the system prompt is basically the soul of an AI. It's essentially the hidden set of instructions that controls how the model thinks, how it responds, what it's allowed to say, and what it's forced to not say. And for a company like Cursor, which is trying to build the best AI coding assistant, and is reportedly valued at over $10 billion by the way, this isn't just any system prompt. It's the blueprint for their whole product. And now, thanks to this leak, we can actually see it. 
Now, I realize this is something that not everyone might be interested in, so I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check out the full thing yourself. But I do want to show you guys one of the most interesting parts I came across. Under the communication guidelines section, one of the points reads, Refrain from apologizing all the time when results are unexpected. Instead, just try your best to proceed or explain the circumstances to the user without apologizing. So some of you might remember this. There was a time when AI models used to constantly over apologize. Like every time something went slightly wrong, it was I'm sorry this and sorry that. And it was just really annoying and inefficient. I mean, they still sometimes even do that now. So now I'm wondering, is this how they finally fixed it? Like, was it really just a matter of simple prompt engineering all along? Speaking of leaks, let's talk about DeepSeek R2. This is a model that's been highly anticipated and it's likely dropping sometime this week. My guess would be either Tuesday or Wednesday, and of course, I'll be making a full video covering it once it's out. But in the meantime, we've got some new information that supposedly leaked about R2. Now, disclaimer, I'm not 100% sure how credible this is but it's been going pretty viral on X. So one of the claims is that DeepSeek R2 will be a 1.2 trillion parameter model, and it'll use a mixture of experts' architecture. No real surprise there. But the crazier rumor is that DeepSeek R2 will be 97.3% cheaper than GPT-40. Supposedly, it will cost around 7 cents per million tokens input, and 27 cents per million tokens output. Which, if this is true, I mean, that would just be ridiculous. That would make it by far the cheapest Frontier model we've ever seen, period. The leak also mentions a few other things, like scoring 89.7% on CEVAL 2.0, improved vision capabilities, and 82% utilization on the Huawei Ascend 910B chips which basically just means it's super efficient, especially compared to most large models today. So again, these are just rumors, exciting rumors to be fair, and they definitely seem credible, but we'll have to wait until the model actually drops to confirm anything, which again, should hopefully be sometime this week. All right, now in other AI news, OpenAI has been making some moves of their own recently. Just last week, they announced ImageGen in the API. We're launching GPT Image 1, making ChatGPT's powerful image generation capabilities available to developers worldwide starting today. So this is essentially their native image generation that went viral on X a few weeks ago, and you can now use it to build your own AI applications. OpenAI also recently entered into a partnership with The Washington Post. The Post's essential journalism is now featured in ChatGPT search responses. Now, The Washington Post is of course owned by Jeff Bezos, for those who didn't know. And based on everything going on at Amazon lately, it's pretty clear that he's all in on AI. This new partnership also comes as OpenAI is still fighting off legal battles from other news platforms, like the New York Times, for example. And honestly, it's going to be really interesting to see how all this plays out. Because at this point, I'm not sure how much longer traditional media companies are going to be able to hold their ground against AI. Especially now that every Frontier model has built-in web search capabilities. Now, speaking of web search, OpenAI has also reportedly been shopping around for a browser of their own. According to recent reports, they've actually set their sights on Google Chrome. So Google has been under fire lately from the US Department of Justice after a judge ruled that they essentially hold a monopoly over online search. And depending on how things shake out, Google might eventually be forced to sell parts of its business, including Chrome. And interestingly, an OpenAI executive, Nick Turley, recently testified that OpenAI would be interested in buying Chrome if it were put up for sale. This would, of course, be a massive data play for OpenAI. And obviously, Google being their biggest competitor right now does not want to let that happen. And so we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on how this all develops. On top of all of this, OpenAI is also projecting some absolutely massive revenue growth over the next few years. They're forecasting their revenue to top $125 billion by 2029, which by the way, would be almost 10 times what they expect it to be this year. And by 2030, they're aiming even higher, projecting around $174 billion in revenue as they roll out new products, specifically mentioning things like AI agents. 
Alright, now before we get into the robots we got a glimpse of at the beginning of this video, I wanted to quickly mention this. In Google's latest earnings call, CEO Sundar Pichai revealed that more than one third of all code written at Google is now generated by AI. Which, if you really think about it, is insane. This is also up from his estimate of 25% of all new code at Google being AI generated that he made in the last earnings call in October. I wonder what it will be next earnings call. Finally, in the world of AI-powered robotics, AI startup Physical Intelligence introduced their new model Pi.5 that aims to tackle open world generalization. So in this clip, they essentially drop off their new robot model into several Airbnbs across San Francisco that it has never seen before and that weren't in its training data. And they test to see if it can function in these novel environments, checking to see how well it can actually generalize. And well, the results were pretty incredible. Check this out. All right, uh, could you close the cabinet? Can you place the dishes in the sink too? Please clean up the spill too. Did you clean the bedroom? So, I mean, to be fair, it's impossible to know how well these robots actually performed. Like, it's not exactly clear if the robot was able to complete these tasks on the first try, but either way, the point is, we're getting close to having humanoid robots inside our homes. We already have companies like Physical Intelligence working on the generalization part of the puzzle. We've seen that Google and Nvidia are working on this too, and so I truly believe we're almost there. There was also this clip that's been going pretty viral recently on X of robots autonomously folding hotel laundry. I mean, this is probably the most tedious thing for hotel staff and it just makes so much sense to have robots in there banging them out, making sure there's always fresh towels for the guests. This use case definitely seems like a benefit for all. Now, while we're on the topic of AI-powered robots, Elon Musk made a new ambitious prediction, where he claimed that robots will surpass good human surgeons within a few years, and the best human surgeons within roughly five years. This was in response to another X post that talked about how robot surgeons were already here. It states, Medtronic tested its Hugo robots in 137 real surgeries, fixing prostates, kidneys, and bladders. And the results were better than doctors expected. Complication rates were super low. The robot got a 98.5% success rate, way above the 85% goal. And out of the 137 surgeries, only two needed to switch back to regular surgery. One because of a robot glitch, and one because of a tricky patient case. So, I don't know, I think Musk's prediction is definitely optimistic, and I know he doesn't have the best track record, but I honestly don't think he's that far off on this one. I mean, when we're talking about life or death situations, if the robot is better, and I'm the one on the surgery table, I'm choosing the robot every day of the week. I mean, whatever gives me more chance of surviving, right? Like, at a certain point, if the robots are just clearly better at certain surgeries, it would almost be unethical to not let them replace human surgeons. Anyway, to close out the video, here's some footage from the recent half marathon in Beijing, where humanoid robots actually took part. This half marathon was open to both human runners and bipedal robots. And while the robots obviously weren't competing to win, the fact that they can even finish parts of the course is honestly pretty incredible. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.